All right, so the last two days in Bitcoin have, it's been pretty exciting, right? So we had a new all-time high. We had um, the old all-time high with respect to what it was on Coinbase. Uh, it was 64.899. So we broke that yesterday. <clears throat> it was, uh, I think, before lunch. So let's pull up the four hour. And yesterday, what was yesterday's date? It was the 20th. So here we go. Yeah, so it was in the morning now before lunch. Uh, where we really, <clears throat> you know, we got the momentum to go higher and we broke it and a single four hour candle. And then, but since then we've, we've been down, right? So here on the four hour, we had some consolidation. We re re uh, retested the nine, went above it. Um, we had, so here's the thing about it. We had a nine on the four hour all the way back from whenever we hit the all time high back in April, was it? Here it is right here. So if I zoom in here and I look at this, we had a nine right here. Uh, it wasn't the, 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 it was a previous four hours. So it was that, that evening of April the 13th where we got the high, but then we had the nine and then we, we went down from there. Uh, all the FUD started coming in, the ESG FUD and China FUD, uh, you know, miners being ban uh, banned out of, out of China. So we had this nine and Whenever we were going to break the all-time high, I was like, okay, we're getting momentum, so we can look at the CMF. Um, this will load. It's running slow. Here we go. CMF. So we had we had the nine. We had some consolidation. Um, we what was it? The day before it was, I think, right here. Uh, what was it the nineteenth? Uh, a lot of people were kind of right here on the on the nine, yeah. So this nine, there was a lot. It was so sixty four, uh, eight ninety nine. People were thinking we would break it here. We kind of pulled back a little bit. Uh, I think. Let's see. Here's the nineteenth. We pulled back just a little bit, but we we consolidated for a couple hours, right? Uh, and then we finally got that candle breakout. But what I was looking at was we were right here on this candle. We were As we were building this candle, I was like, okay, if we can break the CMF above 0.3, we'll probably break it. And, I, and that morning, I really felt that we were, you know, once I saw the price action in this candle, and I think even on the hourly, uh, you could see that the CMF had already started. We had a nine there. This two was developing, and I'm like, we're going to get it because the CMF had already started coming up. Uh, and that's, I mean, that's, we, we broke it, right? So everyone was extremely happy. Now we're in a bit of a pullback. So I think, you know, someone bought this top uh, back all the way in April. So if I could, let's go to the daily so it's not as messy. I mean, you had buyers all here, pullback buyers all here. Um, I do think that some of the market, because you can see that there's bullish divergence here. Uh, there was sellers here for sure as we were reaching those highs. Let me hide this real quick. Right, that sold off. So if you were stuck in this market and you didn't, you know, capitulate here, um, you're kind of back at break even, right? Now, uh, if you're a little nervous, you think, okay, I I've, 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 I've made a little bit of profit, probably not much, uh, but now it's pulling back. Maybe I can catch it on a pullback, uh, and then you know maybe load up a little bit more. So we got the retest of the four hour here. So I'm going to take that off my chart uh, and you can kind of see it kind of supported it for a little while here, here, and then it finally broke down. Uh, so that's gone. The next thing we have is the daily that's at 64.5, uh, which we just printed here. Um, you can kind of see that there was always, there was already some little mild uh, bearish divergence. Uh, well, no, we broke out here, but then we started to fade. But what I was watching was we had the funding rate starting to go up um, even on the hour aggressively on the daily as well and on the weekly. So whenever I'm, whenever I look back here at this candle, uh, and I posted it on my Twitter. So we, we came down, we did retest this area, but we didn't stay here long enough in order to print a red number. So we didn't, we didn't really clear. I mean, we cleared out some leverage. You can kind of see here, uh, where they went net short. Uh, so, you know, the, the, this leverage got liquidated, but it wasn't enough, 
I don't think, you know, if we would have stayed here for maybe another half a day, that maybe might have been enough. And then maybe we would be at like 70,000 today instead of 62,000. So I think there's some leverage that has to get cleared out. Obviously, it got cleared out a little bit here. You know, these funding rates are going down. Do I think we can still retest this 59? Yeah, I, I do. Um, we can look at the CMF and the RSI and see where we're at. I know the RSI on the hourly is pretty buried. So yeah, so we, we, we broke it here. That's a bearish signal that we broke. My CMF is declining with price action. Uh, you can kind of see there's bearish divergence as well. Kind of started forming here. I mean, what you want to see is you want to see CMF going up as uh, my price action is going down. But my RSI broke here. That's bearish. We did hit a nine. Uh, we hit the nine here. We got the one candle uh, kind of reversal retest. Now we're, we're, we're on the bottom end of oversold uh, on the RSI. My CMF isn't quite climbing yet. And I don't have my funding rate going negative yet. So I think we're going lower. Uh, we can look at the four hour. That's not quite negative yet. So I think, here's what I think. I think if we, so this is obviously right here is going to be support, right? So we have a one, we have a nine. This is, this is good support right here. So you're looking at uh, 62, say 57. So say, say 62, uh, 62,000. That's good support. <clears throat> now, if we break, I would say if we break, I mean, the way this works is, and I'll pull up the other one because I have my, my setup, my support area from the one right here, right there. So, and we have the nine here. So here, here's what's, here's what happens. If we close below, what is this line? It's the low of the one, 61,127. So if we close below 61,1, I'm going to say, on the four hour, we are, and we don't get a bounce here. So I think we'll, well, I think we'll definitely probably get in the 61 area uh, because we, I just don't see any, I don't see anything on the CMF that's telling me I'm, I'm diverging bullish yet. Um, I can look at, I think my hash revenues look fine. They're still fine. Those are based on the daily. Um, my SAR is, I mean, it broke on the four hour, but that's not that big of a deal. My weekly still looks great. Uh, we're good. Um, I mean, that's all I'm really worried about right now. That's all I'm going to look at anyway. Um, I can look at my Bollinger bandwidth. That should have, I mean, our volatility on a weekly basis is pretty low. The daily, it probably started to climb. Um, four hour. Yeah. I mean, it's actually kind of decreased, but we've had spikes. Um, let me look at, I just want to look at my regular Bollinger bands. Let me hide this real quick. Yeah, we're below it. There's a little bit of compression. We broke out of there. Daily, uh, we went on the upper band. This didn't follow through, right? So you need consistent follow through. So if we're here on the upper band, follow through kind of went. I mean, that. this was good. This was good follow through. We consolidated. There's probably a nine there. Yep, nine, consolidation. Green number above prior green number, we went up. So if here you would have closed. 61, you would have got, what, maybe about 10%. Now you're sitting on less than that, less than 5%. Um, so yeah, I think we're going lower. I think we're looking for 61.1 is the area that you need to watch because if we go below that, we are probably going to wick to this 59.4 area because that's where my support is on my 4-hour. I've got support from the 9 here, support from the 1. If I break below this... That won't be good. There's a 13 here. This is good support. And this support is being pulled from where? Where is this for at? This is also old support. All the way back from May. Uh, but it's still it's still good. Uh, like I said, these nines are really good on the T sequential. It's the way I trade it. Um, and it's worked. So what we're going to look for is if this, if this breaks down. Uh, this CMF really needs to start to turn up. But if this breaks down. 61.1. We're going to look for oversold probably area on the four hour. We're going to look for a bullish divergence on probably a wick in the 50 lower, you know, below 50, 59.5. Uh, 
uh, you'll probably see, and then you'll probably see the funding rates go negative as well. That'll be a sign to buy. These will be definitely negative, and the RSI on the hour on the um, on the hourly will also it'll probably reach heavily oversold areas. Uh, so you look for uh, reverse on the CMF on the hourly, the four hour, my daily. <clears throat> um, that's a mark here. I think we'll probably come back and then retest this on a consolidation or something. Uh, I don't think we'll just blow through this area anymore. I mean, double tops in crypto are not necessarily uh, common. So since this wick kind of just, I mean, this is, I would say that this is like a double top, even though we did break an all time high. This is, this is like, there's enough room here for error, right? Cause like the highs between these are really small. What is it? 3%. So, um, or it's like a couple hundred bucks. Oh, I'm sorry. It's 2000, but either way, that's small enough, uh, between the two highs that I, I would call this like a kind of like an area where, you know, once we get above this three, um, on the weekly, cause this is a reversal candle. As long as this doesn't close red though, I'm not necessarily worried because my CMF is still trending up and we really need a breakout above this 0.44, uh, because this is resistance. There was a chart I saw that in this area, um, it's, uh, this is an area of kind of resistance, um, for the CMF. And you can kind of see here, if you put it at, I think it's 0.35, right? If I look at that line, Every time it's gotten there, we've kind of pulled back if I bring the price back out. Yeah, right here, like 0 0.35, 0 0.36. So you can kind of see we pulled back here. There's a pullback there. Uh, that's way back in 2016. But you can see here also started pulling back. So are we going to see that? Could we pull back to this 59 area? Uh, yeah. Do I think we're going to stay there for a long time? No, I don't because there's actually a chart by somebody on Twitter. Uh, is it Nanya Business is what it is. Uh, he, he, he does a lot of good charts. Here we go. So how many days has Bitcoin stayed below the prior all-time high when it breaks it, right? Let me see if I can find it here. I want to show, because it's a good chart. Here, no, that's not it. That's not it. Here it is. So, all-time high broke, and it, zero days below the all, the previous all-time high. All-time high broke, previous zero days. All-time high broke here at the beginning of 2017. 28% drop, 44 days. Here, all-time high broke, zero days below it. Here, the all-time high, based on his chart, was... I, I'm not sure where he's pulling this from. But it's uh, 64, 8, 898. So on Coinbase, it's 64, 899. Uh, if we close, when do we close? We close in four minutes. So we're probably going to close here below uh, the previous all-time high, right? Unless we get, in four minutes, we get a massive jump up. Uh, I say massive, it's not that much. If we get a, 4% move in the next, say, three minutes, three, four minutes. Um, we're going to close below that. So that'll be the, that'll be, you know, it won't be zero days. It'll be one day, right? And the pullback is not large enough at all. It's nothing. It's 7%. Say we, say we reach back to, uh, you know, say we do pull back that 28%. That's really the only point we have. Uh, that, that brings us all the way back to 48,000. Is that going to happen? Uh, I'm not probably, you know, we'll have to see that we'll have to follow up the price action and see how that works. But uh, as of right now, it's one day and uh, we'll follow it and we'll see what happens. But that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for uh, 59 would probably be an, an area where I would scale in uh, if we break that 61 one. So that's the analysis of that. One more one I want to look at uh, would be Tesla. Uh, I did open a position in Tesla um, at the end of August. I've been bullish since then. Whenever it broke 
above seven, like seven fifteen, seven sixteen. That basically is super simple, based off of that three um, MA strategy that I always talk about. The entry here was like seven ten. Uh, I think I got in a little bit higher because it was on this higher wick. You know, we had the three close above the eight, the eight close above the thirty MA, close above the high, and then since then I've been long. So if I just take the high of this wick, currently up twenty four percent. Like I said, that was at the end of August. Um, it's been basically almost two months. So 10% a month, not bad. What am I looking at now on this? Uh, my target was the previous T. So we had a TD9 all the way back from here that wasn't uh, retested uh, with a red number. So whenever this broke out, I said best case scenario is the previous all-time high. So my target, uh, if you go to Twitter and you follow me on Twitter, my target was 885. Where do we go? Uh, today we went to 900. Uh, if I say 885, how how off was I from there? I was off by 15%. I know. I mean, sorry, not 15%. 15, 1550, 1.27%. I had said that that was the target whenever I entered two months ago. Uh, couldn't we get a pullback? Yeah, because we have a nine on the daily. We have a nine on the weekly. We had one actually four weeks ago, but this is a continuation, right? Um, but if I look at the RSI and the CMF, which is two things that I use, uh, there's bullish diver bearish divergence here. We just broke out there, but we still have the bearish divergence consist, you know, it's all the way back from September, 2020, February, uh, I'm sorry, 2020, that's bearish. This is bearish. We need this to break. We need this RSI to break above, um, 83, we need the CMF to break above basically 0.29. So we need to, in order to continue this run up, the daily, I believe has already started. Oh, nope. So it's, it's breaking out. Uh, CMF against, you can see here also is not, it's just trending down. Uh, this needs to start turning up. So I'm actually have a stop for 15% of my position on the low of this nine. Will I raise it to, uh, you know, 855 maybe. I think I'm going to keep it here to exit, you know, part of my position. Uh, even though I think that this is probably the high uh, and I should probably get out the position that I, you know, part of my position, I'm going to wait and see uh, because we can get some larger volume in here. And if I look at on balance volume, I, that could maybe tell me a little bit more. That's climbing. So that's bullish actually, right? It, it actually broke out. Um, what's my regular volume? look like regular volume is also higher uh let's look at it on the weekly though on balance volume is nice but compared to back here the volume isn't even nothing it's nothing compared to what it was uh so i'm just watching i'm waiting i'm looking at where i can put my stops to exit some of my position um we're gonna look at triple ma so i'm getting out of my position completely uh, once price goes below the eight and the late and the eight on the daily would go below the 30 and that's all the way back at 788. So the majority of my position, I would not close until I get 10% down farther. I mean, this is going to go up day by day. So right now it's 10%, but you know, we'll see how it goes. I, I don't like to get out of positions early. And if I don't catch the top and if I'm off by 5%, that's, that's okay with me. You, no one actually, perfectly catches the top. So Tesla, I just want to go over because I had that position for the past two months now, almost. Uh, Bitcoin, we're watching, like I said, the four hour and, oh, not that one. And there's, you know, uh, I've been scaling back these videos. I said, I'll only do them when I feel like it's probably a relative time to do one. Um, new days opened. So that's one day below the, the previous all-time high of uh, 64,899. We'll see how this goes. I can go to the four hour to see what my, see it like, again, my CMF, my RSI look like here. Oh, we've got a bounce there. We can bottom on a six. So some, you know, that's some bullish divergence a little bit, just starting to show itself. We can see what it looks like on the hourly. Still haven't gone. Still haven't, that still hasn't recovered. And if I'm trading the RSI, I mean the TD sequential, like I would, 
I have a two below a one below the nine. That's bearish. Um, I'm looking at my funding rates. Funding rates so I haven't gone negative. I'm waiting for that. So yeah, there you go. It's it's decreased on the four hours, so that's good. So we'll see. Uh, but either way, long term, still bullish on Bitcoin. Short term, if you're looking for an entry, I'd put one there. But, you know, I think anywhere here is okay. Do I think we're going to go all the way back down here, fifth below this area? No, I'd be surprised. This is a this is a big area of support right here. Um, so that's it, and I appreciate it, and thanks for watching.